And uh, I would call the meeting to order at 12.05. And uh, I would like to uh, remind everyone that we're now recording this meeting as being live stream on YouTube uh, for the public. Uh, due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, committee members are each in their respective homes and places of work for the duration of this meeting. Um, thank you for those who have joined us today and to the members of the public watching or on our live stream or later the recording of this meeting. Um, at, at the start of every meeting, we do like to acknowledge that uh, uh, we are on First Nations territory. And on behalf of the committee, we would like to acknowledge the traditional land on which we are virtually gathered as Treaty 6 land. We would like to thank the diverse indigenous peoples whose ancestors' uh, footsteps have marked this territory for centuries, such as Cree, Dene, Soto, Nakota Sioux, and Black, Blackfoot peoples. We also acknowledge this as the Metis homeland and the home of the largest concentration of Inuit south of the 60th parallel. It is a welcoming place for all peoples who come from around the world to share the Edmonton metropolitan region as home. Uh, we have a short agenda today, so I would turn it over to Mr. Jankowski to uh, lead us through uh, our discussions this morning or this afternoon. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So yes, we've got a fairly short agenda and there are no additional items at this time. Uh, and I think there is a, an acceptance of the agenda. Do we have to go through that? Yeah, I guess I would look for a motion to adopt the agenda as uh, uh, presented. And I can move that uh, the February 9, 2022 agenda be adopted as uh, as presented. Okay, I'll just a show of hands, all those in favor? And that motion is approved. And you see Andrew's got his virtual hand up there. Good. Thank you. All right. Okay, so Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So without further ado, we've got two fairly short, uh, concise items to update the board on today. The first is I thought I would provide a little bit of an update on the talent acquisition activities that are both underway now and plan to get underway over the course of the next quarter. Um, first of all, I'll start with the two positions that uh, recruitment is uh, ongoing for uh, at this point. Um, I've spoken in the past to the key chief operating officer position that will be instrumental in terms of getting us through the work to prepare for opening day service delivery. And I'm happy to say that after going through an external acquisition process, we've now engaged an external recruiter. The firm of Audgers Burnson from Toronto has been retained on behalf of the board and on behalf of the commission to undertake a continent-wide search for the right transit leader to help us get through the next year of planning and preparation and to ultimately oversee the operation of the integrated transit services, which would include the intermunicipal or regional transit, as well as the local service delivery in the seven municipalities outside of Edmonton starting in 2023. So the you should see over the course of the next few weeks, actually over the course of the next week, you should see some uh, ads being posted on, on various job boards around North America, focused on public sector recruitment largely, uh, as well as transit, uh, the transit industry specifically. Uh, and you, uh, you can be reassured that I understand that the recruiter has already started reaching out to a number of transit leaders across Canada and into the US. Uh, we're hopeful that through this effort, we will be able to expand upon the list of uh, qualified candidates to move beyond those that were identified through the rather, I would say the, the traditional passive sort of recruitment that we attempted late in 2021, and which got us to the point of realization that we were likely to require some assistance 
from an, a professional recruiter to help us along. So that process is underway. The other process that is also underway is for the key manager of communications position. You may recall that we had tried to recruit for this position last year as well. And similar to the chief operating officer, what we realized is that we continue to be challenged by the fact that we're a fairly new entity in the transit world. Uh, we are an entity that is building up, uh, but that admittedly some people view us with a little bit of skepticism and view us as a little bit of a risky place to move to from what are what might be stable employment positions. And so while we had gone through a couple of rounds of seeking the right individual for our, our manager of communications, and we'd actually gotten to the point of actually thinking about or, or actually discussing a potential offer, at the end of the day, we were not able to recruit the right person. And uh, we're going through our uh, kind of a passive recruitment uh, type of strategy for that position as well. Fortunately, with uh, Brian Bechtel and with our digital media advisor, Sean Platt, that uh, did come on board late last year, we do have some of the horsepower that can help us get through the, the immediate challenges from a communications and stakeholder relations perspective. But certainly as we're going into a phase whereby we will be uh, going through the strategic planning work, uh, we anticipate that there will be much greater communications uh, needs in the near future. And we're hopeful that we might be able to, uh, to attract somebody of the right caliber to join our organization in that key role over the course of the next two months. So those are the two positions where recruitment is underway. The next two positions that I have prioritized in conjunction with the discussions around the senior leadership table are the key positions of in-house general counsel. And I've spoken in the past to the fact that now is the right time to bring in some legal assistance into the organization, I believe. We continue to rely on the very strong capabilities of Shores Jardine, uh, but admittedly, as we start thinking about the numerous legal agreements that we're going to have to execute with uh, A, our, our eight member municipalities, and we're probably going to be over the course of the next three to nine months uh, working on two to three agreements per municipality. Uh, and as we start getting into a stage where we will also have to look at the legal agreements that some of the municipalities have with the current service providers and figure out how we appropriately amend those and transition those into EMTSC control, uh, these are legal tasks that uh, I believe will be much more uh, capably and much more cost effectively delivered on if we're able to recruit. The, the type of uh, in-house legal counsel that, that I'm hoping to recruit. I do think it's fair to point out that uh, as we go out and search for that position, we may face a lot of the same challenges that we faced with a number of our, our recruitments to this point. Uh, and, uh, but we'll see how it goes. I'm hopeful that we're, we're able to bring somebody in and in that way contain some of the costs of the, of, of the uh, legal services that we require. Um, similarly, the corporate program manager position, which is highlighted in green or boxed in green under our new director of corporate services, that position and some members of the board might remember that uh, when I was hired under the original agreement with Ernst and Young, Ernst and Young were propo was proposing at that time that a program manager position is probably the uh, the highest priority following the hiring of the CEO. Um, having reviewed the situation back at that time, I decided to defer the hiring of a project manager until we had. Uh, enough uh, capacity at the senior leadership table uh, until we were able to actually bring people in that could refine the approach to the various work streams that, uh, that are now currently underway. Uh, but I think the time is right now as we start realizing and start trying to control and to uh, manage the various work streams, recognizing the significant interdependencies of a lot of the uh, currently, uh, uh, currently programmed activities, the time is right 
for us now to bring in a, a sort of more professional project and program management approach. And uh, I propose to go out over the course of the next quarter with a recruitment of an in-house program manager. That position you can see on the org chart, that position while functionally it will report to the director of corporate services, it will support the entire senior leadership team. It will be looking across the entire board uh, and across the entire organization, looking at the horizontal integration of all of the work activities. Uh, we're depicting it with a dotted line to the CEO's position, but in reality, we could probably show those dotted lines to uh, all of the senior leadership team members because uh, that, that position will be instrumental in terms of helping the entire leadership team. So that's the short talent acquisition update on the map or on the org chart. You can see names where we've already filled the key positions. Uh, we're now at a point where we have seven staff working for you for the board uh, in support of the board's direction and uh, working towards the, uh, the stated strategic and business plan objectives. And with that, I'm happy to answer any questions on this before I move on to the second update. Gentlemen, are there any, oh, um, Mr. Uh, Councillor Broadhead. Um, thanks, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, uh, Mr. Jankowski, I, I appreciate the, uh, the search for in-house legal counsel. Uh, so, is our agreement with Shores Jardine sort of uh, uh, open-ended? And what I mean by that is that we can continue to use them until we find an appropriate in-house uh, counsel? That is correct, sir. We, uh, we've got a, basically a, a um, on-demand type of agreement. And as we require the services, uh, we've been reaching out. I principally have been the contact person between uh, Shores Jardine and the, uh, the commission. Um, there have been uh, the occasional reach outs by the other members of the senior leadership team. Admittedly, I, I think it's fair to point out to the board that we've been very careful and judicious in terms of our, our requests to Shores Jardine, recognizing that uh, the, while they're providing great service, uh, that service comes at a cost. And so we've managed the risks appropriately in my mind. Um, we've made some decisions with regards to uh, our understanding of the legal environment within regulatory environment within which the commission is operating. Uh, but uh, at this point, uh, I, I think the time is right for us to move to see if we can't attract and retain uh, in-house legal counsel. Uh, I'm not saying that we will completely eliminate our reliance on external legal service providers. I think there's always going to be expertise that we're going to have to seek, whether it's from Shore Jardine or perhaps other uh, legal counsel that has expertise in certain areas. Certainly that was the case when we neg negotiated the successful lease agreement uh, that has allowed the commission to move into these, this organization. We actually reached out to a different firm under the guidance of Shore Jardine and we, we retain specific legal counsel in that regard. That practice I suspect will continue for specific items, but for the vast majority of the work, legal work that we're going to require over the next, uh, next year, two years, I, I would suggest that it might be most capably and most cost effectively uh, provided for through an in-house legal counsel. Yeah, I'm not arguing with the decision. It's just uh, it's just around the continuity, so that uh, we had something in place that wouldn't stop us as we go forward. That's my only yep. comment. Yeah, yeah. Paul and I chatted about this the other day when uh, we, I got the update, and I was asking. My question was. Okay, so we've got a, an office uh, that's now kind of uh, functional, I guess, but what, would, what were the plans in relation to uh, uh, accommodating the staff? We've obviously got more staff than we, we've ever had or will have, and so how are we going to accommodate that? So, uh, Paul, maybe you could uh, provide some commentary on that particular point. Yes, thank you. So, um, we did have that discussion between uh, Chair Harris and I, and uh, I, I 
um, kind of went back to the original principles that we presented to the board when we suggested the current office arrangement. And we've been very careful in terms of uh, not oversizing our office requirements here at, uh, at, at 106th Street and Jasper offices, uh, recognizing that as we transition various operations from some of the member municipalities, there are going to be opportunities for us to house leadership staff, house management staff and oversight in some of the offices that might be ancillary to some of the operating facilities that we will be looking to uh, assume control over. Um, and having people located in some of those areas would help us as well with uh, having having a presence in some of those operating facilities and helping us transmit, helping us cultivate, helping us evolve an EMTSC specific corporate culture as we start housing those, those sorts of administrative oversight functions perhaps in some of these other locations. So we've been careful in terms of the number of offices that we are creating here at the head office location recognizing that there are a lot of benefits associated with as we start building out the organization either through direct hires or through assumption of current municipal resources staff resources uh, many of those resources could probably be located effectively and some of these uh, satellite or some of these ancillary locations any questions in that regard gentlemen Okay, any other questions on the um, talent acquisition process thus far? If not, Paul, uh, let's move on to the next item and take it away. Thank you. So the next item, and you'll see in your package, a short uh, discussion note uh, with regards to our work that now Brian Haggerty is kicking off. Um, Brian's with, uh, been with us now for, I think, three to four weeks, and uh, he is starting to, uh, <laughs> to wrap his head around what kind of uh, um, corporate workforce planning features do we need to put in place? What kind of workforce oversight framework do we need to put in place? Um, I was having a discussion with Councillor Munkoff Swain a little bit earlier, and uh, um, you know, time time kind of rolls on. And I highlighted for Councillor Munkoff Swain that by the middle of this year, we will act actually have had a few of the staff here for a one year period. And the time is right now, in my opinion, to for us to start thinking a little more comp comprehensively about all the various building blocks that we need to put in place. Uh, in order to be able to uh, provide the kind of support for all of our staff, the kind of uh, um, guidance, um, the, all, all of the various tools and processes and, and procedures which are required to uh, build out an organization and ensure its ongoing effective governance, its ongoing administration, and a, a, an appropriate focus on the type of corporate culture that we want to create. Uh, for this organization. So pieces such as developing uh, an effective performance management, performance appraisal, uh, performance uh, uh, monitoring system, how that might translate into a comprehensive compensation uh, adjustment plan um, and a compensation framework. All of those kinds of pieces are now the pieces that Brian is starting to uh, put his mind to and starting to do some research on uh, in terms of looking at through, through an environmental scans, looking at what is in place in our current municipalities. One of the things that I'm very conscious of is that as we start transitioning our, our, some of our labor force from some of the current municipal uh, municipal authorities that are delivering transit in some of our municipalities, we have to build a not dissimilar type of uh, type of uh, workforce uh, oversight structure within the commission. We need to ensure that the transition of staff from 
current employers to into the employment of the organization is not unduly compromised or complicated by a framework that uh, that that is not inviting to the incoming staff. So all of those types of pieces are the types of pieces that Brian is now going to start looking at. Um, there is a broad discussion in your note that has been distributed ahead of time as to some of the objectives that we're going to seek to uh, to satisfy and and they're they're kind of itemized in the bullet points on on the screen before you on slide eight as well but there's a lot of work to be undertaken we will be undertaking that in full consultation uh, with not just our member municipal uh, partners, but also looking at what is in place and some of the other regional service commissions that exist within the province to make sure that as we build this up, we build up uh, the organization as an employer of choice and uh, we overcome some of those initial challenges that I've spoken about a little bit earlier in terms of being able to bring people into this, this organization. So expect to hear more from us uh, over the course of the next two quarters as Brian gets his, his hands dirty in this regard. Uh, we do intend to, to make sure that we communicate this piece to the board. I think this is something that the board, although it's administrative in nature, I think it's imperative for the board to be familiar with what it is that we're, we're going to be putting in place and be comfortable with both the, the various elements that, uh, that comprise, uh, will comprise this, this workforce plan and this workforce oversight piece, uh, and also be, be comfortable with the kind of corporate culture that I and the senior leadership team uh, are going to be striving to create for this organization. So I'll stop there. And uh, again, both Brian and I are here uh, and we're happy to answer any questions. This is a work that a, a process that is just getting underway uh, and we will be bringing pieces back to, to both this committee uh, and to the board as a whole in this regard over the next little while. Sam, you have a question. Yeah, no, not a question, more of a comment, um, just to, to acknowledge uh, the, the significance and importance of, of this work. Um, so thank you, Paul and, and Brian, for bringing it forward. You know, this is, you talked a bit about the struggles of trying to recruit folks in and, and the retention is also critical. So, um, you know, if we if we want to be the organization that we're trying to be, we, we need to um, have these pieces in place to, to keep the, the quality talent that, that we're able to attract. So. Um, nothing but full support on this and, and thanks for taking a proactive approach on it. Um, yeah, re really important to uh, scope of work, so thank you. Good. Wes, over to you. Yeah, couldn't agree more uh, with what Sam just said. Uh, um, just, to, just to comment, I, I'm, I'm not sure how to really articulate what I want to say here, but I'll try and spit it out and then maybe you can reflect back at me whether you understand it or not. One of, one, of the, one of the key elements of the commission is this idea that we are regional in nature and that, uh, we, um, that we represent eight uh, unique uh, municipalities at this point in time. And, uh, but in representing those eight, we also uh, represent a, a, a holistic organization going forward. And I'm just wondering how we can how we can instill within our organization this idea that uh, that we in fact are regional in nature. And uh, yeah, we say we you know we're the Regional Transit uh, Service Commission and those sorts of things, but I, I I just don't know how we instill it in in all of the. Uh, um, areas of our, of our organization that, that this is, um, that we represent the region. So I'm probably not saying it very well, but hopefully you'll get my intent there. No, I, I think you're absolutely right. And actually Brian and I were having a discussion about this a couple of days ago. And I alluded to the fact a little bit earlier uh, in the discussion about uh, where people will be located. And, and I think Councillor Harris and I also spoke about this uh, uh, yesterday, I believe. Um, one of the challenges, and, and 
you know, Councillor Broadhead, you're pointing this out. One of the challenges with the strategy that, that I advocated a little bit earlier uh, of having uh, administrative oversight and having human resources located in the into in or adjacent to or ancillary to some of the operating facilities that we're going to be assuming control over. One of the challenges associated with that is that many of those operating facilities are actually integrated within municipal facilities already. And the people that are going to be located in those places, I anticipate many of those people will be people that will be transitioning under EMTSC uh, oversight, guidance, control, uh, while being co-located with what have traditionally been or what have historically been a lot of their co-workers in those facilities. That's going to pose a unique challenge in terms of building a regional mindset within those parts of the workforce that had previously had a very high allegiance naturally to their local communities. And we are going to have to figure out how do we build a regional mindset? How do we create a regionally focused culture within those various workplaces that admittedly also serves their local communities. So it's going to be a, an interesting you know, piece of work, uh, but I'm confident from my past experience that that kind of thing can be accomplished. I think at the end of the day, we're going to be serving the various rate payers, the various travelers that reside in the various communities making up the eight municipalities that we serve. And I see no conflict between thinking about individual community needs while having or building a regional mindset. I, I think it's, it's a challenge that we're going to have to meet. Uh, it, there, there are going to have to be specific considerations as we communicate to them what the overall objectives of the organization are. A big part of that will be as we engage with the board over the course of the next month in our strategic planning and a strategic objective setting, a big challenge will be left up to the senior leadership team and the management layers below that. How do we translate those strategic objectives of the board, of the commission into individual performance objectives? How do we integrate those things into building the corporate culture that we need to serve all of the communities within these eight municipalities and in the future, hopefully beyond that as well into, into uh, a, a total regional system as we, as we take those, those challenges on over the coming years. So I, I think you're absolutely right, Councillor Broadhead. I, I, it, is, it is something that is going to be really interesting to tackle um, and we're, we've recognized it right from the very start that it is going to be a specific challenge that is going to be very different than what, say, a municipal administration might have dealt with uh, when there was a singular point, a singular focus of serving that one particular municipality. Yeah, and, and uh, I guess to uh, augment that, you know, obviously in terms of a strategic agenda driving forward into the objectives that need to either follow through from the business plan or are new as we develop out with new um, staffing resources, we have to look at the branding exercise as well, because that's going to feed into the whole issue of the culture. So what's our brand? What's our culture? All that sort of stuff. So it's, I think it's 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 coincidental that we're doing all of this stuff at the right time. So hopefully we'll build layer upon layer that will ultimately support that um, that overall level of service that we have to provide. So I, I, I think it's obviously uh, an important time for the board and an important time for you, uh, Mr. Jankowski. And as, as we work through this and provide appropriate uh, direction, uh, I, I think that will help to fill in the pieces of the puzzle. So. Gentlemen, any other questions, observations? No, all good. Okay, well, um, then I guess what we need now would be to consider a motion uh, that's on the screen. Who would like to put that forward? Well, I can do that. Uh, okay. That the HR and Compensation Committee accept as information the material and discussion as presented during the HR function update. Great, if Andrew's there too, I would call the question. All those in favor? Hands, I guess hands, white hands, yellow hands, whatever. <laughs> I don't know where it is, it's somewhere in here. Anyways, it looks like that motion uh, is passed.
unanimously. So yeah, he did. Uh, so with that in mind, I guess uh, we uh, can adjourn and you guys can get on to other uh, activities uh, for today. So now would uh, Wes, what do you do have what have you done in the past? Have you just adjourned it within your capacity as chair or do you, have you looked for a motion? I've been fairly loose around that. I think you can declare the meeting uh, uh, adjourned as the chair. That's what I would uh, prefer to do. So on that basis, considering that we've uh, dispensed with the business of the committee thus far, I would uh, uh, so declare the meeting adjourned. And until we meet again soon enough, uh, gentlemen, stay safe, stay healthy, and travel, and ladies, and travel uh, safely. Thank you. Take care. Okay. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Okay, bye-bye.